for being here today, for taking the time to get up very early on this Friday morning. This is very early for me. Um, and to come listen to me speak about traditions. I feel very excited about this theme because I kind of feel like my entire life has been about, um, it's been a journey of battling with, against, and for my cultural traditions, which sounds very confusing. And that's because it is very confusing. And I'm basically just walking around confused all the time. Um, so anyways, I'll start off by telling you a little bit about myself. Um, I was born and raised in Simi Valley, California, um, which you can see a little bit of slide for you, which is very sunny and filled with lots of plants. Um, it's been, I'm very new to Charlottesville. I've been here since February of last year, so it'll be one year soon. And um, like I said, I was born and raised in Simi Valley, California. Usually nobody knows where that is. It's, so I say it's Ventura County and still nobody knows where that is. So then I say it's like 30 minutes from LA and then everyone goes, oh, okay. Yeah, and then everyone looks at me very concerned and asks me how I'm adjusting to this weather and <laughs> I'm getting along okay. Um, anyways, um, so I grew up in California. My mom is from Yahualica, Jalisco, Mexico. My dad is from Baja California, um, Tijuana, Mexico. And um, they immigrated to the US when they were like in their early 20s, met there, um, and me and my two older siblings were born um, and raised in the United States. Um, I identify in a few different ways. First as a Chicana, um, and if you're not familiar with that term, kind of references someone who of Mexican descent who was born in the States um, I identify as a Chicana, as a daughter, a sister, a granddaughter, um, and an artist. And these roles have kind of come to define me as a person, and they've um, influenced the work that I've, I've been doing. Um, I've been an artist for a long time, so I could sit here and show you a lot about, a lot of work, but we'd probably be here for like two or three hours, so instead, um, I'm kind of going to jump forward in my artistic practice and really be focusing on um, when I really started to um, use art as a way to self-identify as um, Mexican, as Chicana, as Latina. Um, so, yeah. So, let me just say, when I first started making work um, that revolved around my heritage, and traditions, it was kind of the first time I really claimed this identity and really owned it. Um, you know, claimed being Mexican American, claimed being Chicana. Um, growing up in a very, you know, conservative town, um, Mexican was very defined by these stereotypes that I didn't identify with at all. So by trying to really push that away, um, I kind of pushed away a little bit of my culture as well. I was kind of like trying so hard not to identify with these stereotypes that I kind of wasn't identifying with the culture in any way. Um, so um, art really became the tool that I used to really own that and kind of navigate these two cultural worlds that, um, that I was growing up in. So, you know, at home I was growing up in a very traditional Mexican setting. Um, but at the same time, I was, you know, growing up in a very traditional American, you know, lifestyle, going to school and with my friends. So um, it was kind of always this battle of figuring out how to, how to navigate and figure out how I fit into these two worlds that felt very different. Um, so I had previously been very frustrated by a lot of things about my culture, um, specifically the machismo, like male-dominated aspect of my culture. Um, and because I had like such a distaste for this, I found it like really hard to separate this one thing um, from the rest of all the wonderful and amazing things about my culture. Um, so um, I decided to make a change and rather than focusing on what was wrong or what I was frustrated about my culture, I decided to focus on what was right and what was important to me. Um, so, Skip ahead. Let's see. Sorry. Okay. So um, I began exploring 
um, our history as a people and as a family. Um, like I said, um, growing up in a relatively conservative town, my own history wasn't really taught to me, um, which is kind of crazy thinking, considering that California was Mexico <laughs> at one point. Um, so they should probably fix that. Um, so I had to actively seek out these histories, you know, independently, apart from school, outside of school. Um, so I looked into things like the Mexican Revolution. Um, this is a piece that was inspired by um, discovering the role that women played in the Mexican Revolution. Um, I looked into things like the Bracero program and farm workers, which brought a lot of Mexican immigrants into the U.S. in the first place, um, my grandfather being one of them. So, you know, if it wasn't for this program, I probably wouldn't be here right now. Um, and I kind of started, um, I started documenting um, our lives, you know, as in our family and our history. Um, that's a photo of my grandfather. And I was doing this in a lot of different ways, um, through sculpture, drawings, photography, and I noticed a pattern as I was doing this. Um, I was not only drawn to the people in my life, um, but the spaces they inhabited as well, and the spaces that they were creating for themselves, for us, um, as a family. So these are all photographs from my grandmother's home. Um, and I noticed especially the women in my family that did this. Um, they were able to make a house into a home. And even more, they were able to turn the home into a cultural experience. Um, but I was also conflicted with this observation. I thought, um, you know, why should the women in our lives only be defined by the domestic contributions um, they make to our lives? But then I realized that that was also a problem because what I was doing was um, I wasn't valuing, um, I wasn't value, I was undervaluing domestic work and not seeing for the true art form that it is. And um, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say that like women should be, <laughs> you know, doing the domestic work. But what I am saying is that what I've noticed in my culture is that women tend to fall into these roles, this role of creating the home. Um, and I think that that's valuable and there is power to that. Um, not that just because, not just because they're providing us a comfortable and beautiful space to live in, um, it's much more than that. What I've determined is that the women in my life are really the, the cultural guardians of our traditions, of our history, um, and our customs. And that's powerful and I want that to be respected and that's what I want to highlight in my work. Um, and so now, um, I make work that highlights the stories of women within my culture and my family. Um, and ultimately, I think that by doing this, I'm, I'm actively you know, fighting against that one thing that I hate, the male-dominated part of my culture, um, and really bringing to attention the major role and power that women in my culture have um, so with that being said, I'm going to talk to you today probably about the most important woman in my life next to my mom, and that's my grandma, or my abuelita, or my nina, as I call her, um, and about the forgotten and underappreciated feminine power of what I call abuelita knowledge. Um, so my current work um, is a recollection, recollection of my memories growing up in my grandmother's house. Um, combined with this kind of, um, these sort of magical, surreal elements as well. Um, so I'm kind of taking these like domestic spaces and combining them with all these like weird, fantastical things as well. Um, so, um, so what I've noticed about these spaces is that I'm creating through drawing um, and now through painting and embroidery as well, um, if you've taken a look in my studio, um, is that they almost seem like uninhabitable by regular people. And there's like these strange things going on where, you know, the indoor 
looks like it's outside. The outside looks like it's inside. There's like inanimate objects growing out of the ground, you know, inanimate objects um, or, you know, plants grow out of random places. Um, things are hanging where you usually wouldn't find them hanging. And, um, you know, trees grow as tall enough to reach the moon, you know? So there's these all these things that don't really make sense. And I think what I'm realizing now is that these spaces, they're not inhabitable by regular people. To me, they're inhabitable by like really strong, powerful women only. And so that's why um, I think that's what's coming up in this work. Um, yeah, and I think what I'm trying to do is by adding this like kind of magical element into these drawings, I'm kind of trying to just capture the magic and that special touch that you know women bring, women in my culture bring to our lives. Um, so, as a woman, okay. So this is kind of in Spanglish, by the way. So I'm like kind of trying to do. So you guys are gonna learn some Spanish words. So I put like some, you know. So my grandmother, um, she was born and raised in El Rancho. Um, I believe my Nina did her best to transform her suburban California home into her own little Mexican ranch. Um, this is um, back in Yawalica in Mexico where my mom was born. So I got the chance to go back a couple years ago and see where my mom was born. Um, so her house was always filled with plants, both medicinal, uh, fruit trees of all kinds, um, limones, um, Guayabas, guayabas, um, eagles. So these are all works that I've been working on um, that actually started off at the bridge when I was an artist in resident this summer. So um, I was going through photographs from my house and from my grandmother's house and kind of um, recreating these fruits through paint and through embroidery as well. Um, more eagles, granadas, nopales, which I'm working on like a really huge one in my studio right now, I'm very excited about. Um, Tunas. And nisperos. And I don't know how you say this in English. So if anyone knows, let me know. Um, but um, her kitchen always smelled of traditional f and simple foods like frijoles. Um, tortillas, mole ranchero, chiles. Um, and the house was small. Both the back door and the front door were always open. And so even when you were inside, it felt like you were outside. Um, and not much has changed from my Nina's house. And it's still my favorite place in the world to be. Um, but what has changed is my perspective on all these things. What I realize now is that my Nina was curating our lives in the United States to mimic her upbringing in Mexico. And I say curated because I truly find that this is a skill and an art practice. Um, you know, arranging things in a certain way, um, you know, really committing to doing things in a certain way so that we were, we were experiencing, you know, what she experienced growing up. I think, like I said, I think it's a skill, and especially when it's being done by a woman who has two homes in two different countries. Um, her commitment to trad tradition allowed us to experience what life in Mexico would have felt like, and she passed on her knowledge and skills um, of what that, that life entails. Um, I've thought a lot about of why this is important, um, especially with this talk coming up and talking about tradition um, and just in my work as well. Like I feel like I've always struggled 
with this concept of tradition of, you know, because there's some things that I don't agree with and then but how do you keep certain things and abandon other things, you know? Um, and I've thought about why pa the passing of these traditions is so significant and what's the purpose of highlighting it in my work. Um, and for me, the answer is that in a place and in a country like a political climate right now where your existence is being actively fought against, um, being yourself and telling your story is an act of resistance in, in that, you know? And for, for me and for my Nina, her living her life unapologetically and to its fullest as a strong Mexican immigrant woman, you know, just carrying out her life as she would in Mexico and not, you know, thinking twice about it, not feeling the need to assimilate in any way. Um, for me, that's the greatest tradition she could have passed on to me because it's allowed me to, and the other women in my life, to continue living our lives unapologetically and continue being proud of where we come from. Um, so keeping that in mind, um, I continue to use my art as a tool to navigate between so many cultural worlds I inhabit. I used to think it was always just two, but it's lots of things and it's all blurred and blended together all the time. And you're not really actively thinking about how you're changing from these, you know, these different worlds. Um, and so um, along the way, I decide what to embrace and what to discard from each of these things and these experiences. Um, and they're resulting in my own, you know, remix traditions. And um, yeah, so with that, I want to say thank you. And I hope you're able to examine your own traditions, you know, the holidays are coming up and examine your own traditions in your family and notice what you've decided to embrace and discard from each of, you know, all these traditions and not only what you've decided to embrace or discard, but why also. And I think that's about it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Living in Charlottesville changed how you think about your work? Yes. So um, Charlottesville in Virginia is a totally different world. Like, I don't think I've ever, like, I didn't understand culture shock until I came here, which is kind of crazy. Um, and it's not bad. It's just totally different, you know? Um, so I think what's changed a lot has been, well, missing the environment a lot. Like I feel, I don't feel tied to the land here. Um, like in California, like I felt this, you know, this connection to the land, like this history. Um, so it's kind of just been coming up in my work a lot, just missing these things. So I'm kind of like trying to create, recreate what I had back in California here. So, um, yeah, so it's changed my work, but it's also been really exciting because I've been able to make a lot of connections um, through my work, and I've been working with a lot of Latino women here, and it's been awesome. Um, so, so yeah, it's been brought, I think, a lot of good things um, out for my work. Yes? Do, do you ever have conversations, or do you ever have conversations with, um, with your grandmother about your struggles with the machismo? Like, does she, do you get to have, does she share this with you, or, or can she hear you when you talk about it? Yeah, she, yeah. So Emma said, if I've ever shared these conversations with my grandmother about, like, my distaste for, like, machismo in my culture, and yes, totally. And she expresses those frustrations as well. Like, me and all my aunts and my moms, like, sit around the table and, you know, and we talk, yeah, anyways. Yeah, so yeah, we've had those conversations and it's really great and it's wonderful to see her feel liberated enough to just like talk about these things, right? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. What brought you to Charlottesville? What brought me to Charlottesville? Um, I, my partner got a job out here at UVA and so I came out here to support him and I actually got a really great job opportunity as well um, during that time, so yeah. That's brought me out. I'm working for Creciendo Juntos, if anyone knows that organization. Um, 
but yeah, it's a nonprofit in town working with the Latino community. So um, yeah, so I was fortunate enough to find that position when I was thinking about moving out here. Mm-hmm. What is your Abuelita's um, reaction to your art, or how do you share that? Um, she just really loves it, and that's what's really important about my work is that the women in my life are able to feel like, I think she feels very sentimental about it, you know, so I, she like recognizes, you know, all of this stuff because it's all things from her home. So I think she just feels really special about it and is able to make that connection. And she's also, her and my aunts and um, my partner's family as well, they get very excited that I'm doing embroidery because they feel like that's kind of been lost uh, with my generation. So they all get very excited and they start showing me like techniques and things like that, so yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, about embroidery, the, your show at the bridge this summer with the like fruit spilling all over it was yeah. so like delicious and amazing. Um, yeah. And I guess I, it made me wonder about your process in terms of like, are you someone who's like, okay, I'm gonna now do embroideries of fruit and there's gonna be spilling over, or do you like go in and look at the canvas and just see what happens? Like, how, I guess how intentional and how intuitive are you? And I know that's really hard to answer, but <laughs> any glimpse of your process we could get. Um, yeah. well, yeah. Um, so if I, did everyone hear that question? Yeah. Okay. So um, I guess my process is very intuitive and it just kind of started with, um, it started off with me just wanting to combine painting with embroidery because I had been doing them separately. Um, and I started doing the pomegranate and just really fell in love with how the the paint would like bleed onto the fabric. And so from there, I just was like, okay, what other fruits grew in my grandmother's home, I'm gonna like do all of them right now because I I was just having so much fun with it, and um, it's been a it's always kind of a struggle with doing embroidery and painting because I end up doing a painting and then like falling in love with certain parts of the painting. So I'm like, oh, what do I cover or what do I not? So it's kind of always a little bit of playing around with that. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that answered your question. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you mentioned your studio space. Mm-hmm. Where can we see your studio and where can we see, like, find your artwork and, like, online and in Yes, my studio is right here, right behind you guys. Um, so I'm the artist in resident right now for here for New City Arts, and it's been amazing. So um, I'm here a lot of late nights. So if you're strolling by and see the light on, feel free to say hi or bring me coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, my artwork, um, I think the link to my website is on the Creative Mornings. Um, and it's just my name, Karina A. Monroy, um, dot com. So, yeah, my work's on there. And I'm in the process of trying to update my website as well. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you.